Hey there, my name is Cizarin and this is going to be a video detailing how I'm going to be shaping my atlas in the upcoming Legion League. This isn't necessarily a guide on how to do maps or how you get Elder Orbs or anything like that, but I have other videos for that that we can link in the description down below, so hopefully that'll help you. So this assumes that you have some basic knowledge of the game already. Now, a, a part of the a part of the shaping strategy here changes a little bit, and uh, like I said, this uh, hopefully you already know how to shape maps. And early on, particularly your tier one to five orbs is something you want to wait with. So, for example, um, I'd say until you've cleared all your whites and all your yellow maps, then you want to wait with shaping your low level maps. I have a full tier list here that I'm going to read out to you that includes low level maps. And these can be particularly good for leveling up new characters in a speedy way. So you're getting these with your first character. And uh, then you'll have some nice layout maps to speed up your leveling on the second one. So for tier one, I'd recommend Haunted Mansion. It's fairly nice layout. No particularly exciting divination cards, but really, really good to experience up fast in. Um, this is also an option later on for your tier 16 map once you got your Elder Orb. But we'll get to that later. Tier two, Glacier. Actually, very low mob density, but it's just such a fast map to clear. So having a few of those around as your tier 7, pretty nice to um, clear quickly. Tier 3, Warp. Pretty decent layout. The, bot isn't, the boss isn't too bad. The shield's pretty annoying, but once you kill the water dudes, he goes down pretty fast. Tier 4, you have Beach. Very, very small map, which also makes it a potential Elder map. Because with Sextants, there is actually quite a lot of monsters in there. Um, but there's a few layouts where the beach will be like really, really long and it can be annoying to clear. Mostly okay though. No particularly exciting divination card, but a very good map nonetheless. Tier 5, we have a Burial Chambers. Now there's a couple of good reasons for this map. It's actually a fairly good layout after the buffs. And it has a decent amount of monster count in it by default. And it also drops the Doctor Divination card, which gives you a Headhunter. So if you're going to be leveling up characters you might as well have a decent chance at a good card. So from tier six, we have a couple of options. So there's not necessarily a really good, um, a really good map here. Mudgeister is probably your best option, but another option is to clear everything as well. So one reason that I wait with shaping um, all the maps is that I like using the three to one strategy to explore more of the Atlas. Now, do remember that you can mix and match, for example, four or five different ancient cities and the combo of three uh, might sell to Arena. And then if you swap one out with another, it might sell to a Spider Forest. We'll have an example of that in the background here. Um, but obviously, if you have five or six, you're guaranteed that you can get which one you want. But um, you could, could get unlucky. You might have to mix and match a bit. So for tier 12, there's a couple of choices. Graveyard is a really, really good choice. The, there's three unique bosses, which is decent for sustain, and they bosses do drop a lot of unique items. So if you're struggling on alchemies as well, that's pretty nice. If you're an SSF player, then Residence is a really, really nice card. It drops a divination, a really nice map, sorry. It drops a divination card called the Dapper Prodigy, which is probably the best drop rate of anything. Like It's a, it's a very nice farmable card. Um, probably one every three to five residences, maybe a little lower than that, but very, very nice drop rate on the Dapper Prodigy. And it gives you an item level 100 six link. Now, this is a great way in any league to get your first six link, but it's also a good way to farm up six links for your future characters in Solo Cellphone. And also gives you the option to vol them once you have several to try to get plus one gems, plus two gems, or plus two like aura gem, or AOE gems. Loads of options. So definitely, even though the layout isn't particularly good, that's a fairly good option. Um, the other option as well for tier 12s is definitely that you can clear everything for an additional bonus. Because if you clear all your 11s and 12s, then it'll definitely help a little bit in sustaining your 13s, 14s, 15s, and 16s. For your tier 8s, very easy choice. Toxic Sewer, it's a great map unless they've changed the layout, which we don't know about yet, but doesn't seem like it. Very, very good map. It's basically a race course circle. It's incredibly fast. The boss isn't too bad because it's very 
telegraphed. It does like a poison spit that very deadly, don't get me wrong. But once you get used to it, it's fairly easy to dodge and avoid and don't stand in like the poison arrow tracks that it leaves behind. For tier 9 to 14, you have your underground C. They're, they drop um, alchemy cards, which is very nice. It also drops the um, the Ventures, or I think it's Unique Gold Ring card, and the Light light Poetry Divination card. And the boss drops the Cacophony, uh, which is three Deafening Essences, I think, or something like that. It's a very, very nice map. Like, the Divination cards alone, just beautiful. Sadly, the boss was nerfed a bit, so it now has two stages. That was like six months ago, but uh, it didn't used to. So that's definitely a downside. Underground C can actually take some practice to clear. It might not seem like a particularly linear map, but once you get used to it and start clearing around the edges and you can finish sort of inside with it, with a lot of practice, you can basically end up doing no backtracking, making a really, really nice map. And you see a lot of racers ended up having this as your tier 16. And lastly, part of the reason being that you could use white sextants, where obviously we can't anymore, so it would be yellow sextants. Still very good as a tier 16 in trade league. For your tier 10, I'd say the choice is very easy. You have um, Volcano, very, very easy choice. Uh, drops the King's Heart Divination card, which especially this thing is going to be very popular. We're hoping for a lot of melee builds, and then you can, <clears throat> and then you can, for example, six link a axe or a sword and use Combs Heart as your chest. So this is probably going to sell very well. It's definitely a clear cut case of what you want here. The only other tier 10 that's any remotely good is Bog, but um, yeah, Volcano kind of blows it out of the water. That pretty much sums up like the, the shaping maps. Another note is Moon Temple can be pretty good to either farm or um, shape early on just to get the uh, Twilight Temple Divination card. They sell fairly good. The, the unique map Twilight Temple sells fairly good early league. And you know, you want one for SSF just for the plus one Atlas. As far as tier 16s go, uh, shaper farming is probably going to be fairly expensive. So that's um, definitely worth looking at unlocking, you know, especially if you're going to farm Shaper yourself. I can see that being very profitable both in um, both in Softcore and Hardcore. And um, sustaining your tier 16 might not be hard. We don't have Synthesis anymore. It's not going core. And obviously that was a big part of our map sustain. And we don't know how much the new Legion mechanic is going to have to do with map sustain or if it's just going to be a slight bump in how much maps drop naturally. We'll find that out during the Legion release. For your tier 16 orb, we have a couple of options. We have Haunted Mansion, really great layout, especially once you get used to it. Um, there's a lot of monsters in there already, and you can use four white sections. Very, very good option. Thicket is probably going to be one of the better sustained maps. It's got a decent amount of monsters, and the boss isn't particularly hard, which is one downside with Haunted Mansion. The boss can be fairly rippy. Thicket boss. Never really had any issues with it. I'm sure if you rolled it hard enough, you might. But uh, pretty great map. The, the layout isn't too bad as well. I actually quite like it. And um, the natural mobs that spawn there are fairly nice too. A lot of monkeys and stuff like that. Underground Sea, as we talked about, is a fairly good trade league option. If you don't mind using yellows, uh, yellow sections on your tier 16, I generally will prefer going with a white map as my tier 16. Um, City Square is a pretty good option for both hardcore and softcore, but even more so for softcore because the boss can be very rippy. If you end up with like two or three damage mods, very easy on a life build to get one shot or possibly even CI after the changes. So be careful with the City Square boss, but it's definitely a really nice choice for your Eldorov. It can get, as far as I can see, it's at least three, maybe four white sections as well. Obviously, every map is in range of exactly five sections now which is really nice. That pretty much sums up all the options for what maps to shape and stuff like that. If you have any questions, you can drop by my Twitch channel on twitch.tv slash scissorin. And there might be some changes depending if divination cards get moved and stuff like that. But uh, that's, that's generally the maps that I'm going to be using. I'm leaning towards Haunted if I can sustain it and Thicket if I can't for my personal tier 16. But we'll see how we do. I'm aiming for SSF this league. So we'll see. As you can see around the edges of the map as well. Um, there are like specific zones for where these things drop. So I'll link this map into the description down below. You can see like bone helmets and stuff here. 
and uh, where the opal, marble, steel, and blue pearl ring. So obviously the steel is going to be very nice. So having, for example, wall pyramids and orchards and stuff unlocked isn't going to be the worst this thing. We'll see how common they are. So obviously they're going to be used a lot more now with melee getting buffed. So that's something to think about as well. But hopefully you guys enjoy the video and all the tips. There's a lot more coming as well before Legion comes out. Thanks for watching and try to die less than I do.